In mathematics and physics, a tensor field assigns a tensor to each point of a mathematical space, typically a Euclidean space or manifold. Tensor fields are used in differential geometry, algebraic geometry, general relativity, in the analysis of stress and strain in materials, and in numerous applications in the physical sciences. As a tensor is a generalization of a scalar, a pure number representing a value, like length, and a vector, a geometrical arrow in space, a tensor field is a generalization of a scalar field or vector field that assigns, respectively, a scalar or vector to each point of space. Many mathematical structures called tensors are tensor fields. For example, the Riemann curvature tensor is not a tensor, as the name implies, but a tensor field. It is named after Bernhard Riemann, and associates a tensor to each point of a Riemannian manifold, which is a topological space. <laughs> Geometric introduction Intuitively, a vector field is best visualized as an «arrow» attached to each point of a region, with variable length and direction. One example of a vector field on a curved space is a weather map showing horizontal wind velocity at each point of the Earth's surface. The general idea of tensor field combines the requirement of richer geometry, for example, an ellipsoid varying from point to point, in the case of a metric tensor, with the idea that we don't want our notion to depend on the particular method of mapping the surface. It should exist independently of latitude and longitude, or whatever particular cartographic projection we are using to introduce numerical coordinates. <laughs> Via coordinate transitions Following Schouten and McConnell 1957, the concept of a tensor relies on a concept of a reference frame or coordinate system, which may be fixed relative to some background reference frame, but in general may be allowed to vary within some class of transformations of these coordinate systems, for example, coordinates belonging to the n-dimensional real coordinate space, R in display style math bf r caret in may be subjected to arbitrary affine transformations x k a j k x j plus a k Display style x caret k mapstoa underscore j caret k x caret j plus a caret k with n dimensional indices summation implied. A covariant vector or covector is a system of functions v k display style v underscore k that transforms under this affine transformation by the rule v k v i a k i display style v underscore k mapsto v underscore i a underscore k caret i the list of Cartesian coordinate basis vectors E K display style math BF e underscore K transforms as a covector since under the affine transformation e K a K I e I 
Display style Math BF E underscore K Mapstoa underscore K carrot I Math BF E underscore I A contravariant vector as a system of functions V K Display style V carrot K of the coordinates that under such an affine transformation undergoes a transformation V K a minus one J K V J Display style V carrot K mapsto A carrot minus one underscore J carrot K V carrot J this is precisely the requirement needed to ensure that the quantity v k e k display style v caret k math bf e underscore k is an invariant object that does not depend on the coordinate system chosen. More generally, a tensor of valence P, Q, has P downstairs indices and Q upstairs indices, with the transformation law being T I 1 I P J 1 J Q A I one I one A I P I P T I one I P J one J Q a minus one J one J one O minus one J Q J Q Display style T underscore I underscore one C D O T S I underscore P carrot J underscore one C D O T S J underscore Q Mapstoa underscore I underscore one carrot I underscore one C D O T S O underscore I underscore P carrot I underscore P T underscore I underscore one C D O T TSI underscore P carrot J underscore one C D O T S J underscore Q A carrot minus one underscore J underscore one carrot J underscore one C D O T S a carrot minus one underscore J underscore Q carrot J underscore Q the concept of a tensor field may be obtained by specializing the allowed coordinate transformations to be smooth or differentiable, analytic, etc. A covector field is a function v k of the coordinates that transforms by the Jacobian of the transition functions in the given class. Likewise, a contravariant vector field V K display style V caret K transforms by the inverse Jacobian. Topic: Tensor bundles. The vector bundle is a natural idea of vector space depending continuously or smoothly on parameters the parameters being the points of a manifold m for example a vector space of one dimension depending on an angle could look like a mobius strip as well as a cylinder 
Given a vector bundle V over M, the corresponding field concept is called a section of the bundle, for M varying over M, a choice of vector Vm in Vm, where Vm is the vector space at M. Since the tensor product concept is independent of any choice of basis, taking the tensor product of two vector bundles on M is routine. Starting with the tangent bundle, the bundle of tangent spaces, the whole apparatus explained at component-free treatment of tensors carries over in a routine way, again independently of coordinates, as mentioned in the introduction. We therefore can give a definition of tensor field, namely as a section of some tensor bundle. There are vector bundles which are not tensor bundles, the Mobius band for instance. This is then guaranteed geometric content, since everything has been done in an intrinsic way. More precisely, a tensor field assigns to any given point of the manifold a tensor in the space V V V V Display style v o times c d o t s o times v o times v caret asterisk o times c d o t s o times v caret asterisk, where v is the tangent space at that point and v is the cotangent space. See also tangent bundle and cotangent bundle. Given two tensor bundles E M and F M, a linear map out gamma E gamma F from the space of sections of E to sections of F can be considered itself as a tensor section of E F. Display style script style E caret asterisk o times F. If and only if it satisfies a F S. Closing parenthesis equals F A S in each argument, where F is a smooth function on M, thus a tensor is not only a linear map on the vector space of sections, but a C infinity M linear map on the module of sections. This property is used to check, for example, that even though the Lie derivative and covariant derivative are not tensors, the torsion and curvature tensors built from them are. Notation the notation for tensor fields can sometimes be confusingly similar to the notation for tensor spaces. Thus, the tangent bundle Tm Tm might sometimes be written as T 0 1 M equals T M equals T M display style T underscore zero carrot one M equals T M equals T M to emphasize that the tangent bundle is the range space of the one zero tensor fields, i.e., vector fields on the manifold M. This should not be confused with the very similar looking notation T zero one V display style T underscore zero carrot one V in the latter case, we just have one tensor space, whereas in the former, we have a tensor space defined for each point in the manifold M. Curly script letters are sometimes used to denote the set of infinitely differentiable tensor fields on M. Thus, T N M M. Display style math call t underscore n caret m m. 
are the sections of the M /N tensor bundle on M which are infinitely differentiable. A tensor field is an element of this set. Topic the C infinity M module explanation there is another more abstract but often useful way of characterizing tensor fields on a manifold M which makes tensor fields into honest tensors i.e. single multilinear mappings though of a different type although this is not usually why one often says tensor when one really means tensor field First, we may consider the set of all smooth C infinity vector fields on M T M. Display style math call T M. See the section on notation above as a single space and three a module over the ring of smooth functions C infinity M by pointwise scalar multiplication. The notions of multilinearity and tensor products extend easily to the case of modules over any commutative ring. As a motivating example, consider the space T M display style math call T caret asterisk M of smooth covector fields, one forms also a module over the smooth functions. These act on smooth vector fields to yield smooth functions by pointwise evaluation, namely, given a covector field ω and a vector field x, we define ω x p equals ω p x p. Because of the pointwise nature of everything involved, the action of ω on x is a c infinity m linear map, that is, ω f x p. Topic F P Omega P X P F Omega P X P for any P and M and smooth function F. Thus we can regard covector fields not just as sections of the cotangent bundle, but also linear mappings of vector fields into functions. By the double dual construction, vector fields can similarly be expressed as mappings of covector fields into functions, namely, we could start natively with covector fields and work up from there. In a complete parallel to the construction of ordinary single tensors, not fields, on M as multilinear maps on vectors and covectors, we can regard general K L tensor fields on M as C infinity M multilinear maps defined on L copies of T M. Display style math call T M and K copies of T M display style math call T caret asterisk M into C infinity M. Now, given any arbitrary mapping T from a product of k copies of T M display style math call T caret asterisk M and L copies of T M display style math call T M into C infinity M. It turns out that it arises from a tensor field on M if and only if it is a multilinear over C infinity M. Thus, this kind of multilinearity implicitly expresses the fact that we're really dealing with a pointwise defined object, i.e., a tensor field, as opposed to a function which, even when evaluated at a single point, depends on all the values of vector fields and one forms simultaneously. A frequent example application of this general rule is showing that the levi savita connection, which is a mapping of smooth vector fields x y x y display style x y mapsto nabla underscore x y 
Taking a pair of vector fields to a vector field, does not define a tensor field on M. This is because it is only R linear in Y in place of full C infinity M linearity, it satisfies the Leibniz rule X F Y equals X F Y plus F X Y display style nabla underscore X F Y equals X F Y plus F nabla underscore X Y Nevertheless, it must be stressed that even though it is not a tensor field, it still qualifies as a geometric object with a component-free interpretation. Topic: Applications. The curvature tensor is discussed in differential geometry, and the stress-energy tensor is important in physics and mathematics. Of these, are related by Einstein's theory of general relativity. In electromagnetism, the electric and magnetic fields are combined into an electromagnetic tensor field. It is worth noting that differential forms, used in defining integration on manifolds, are a type of tensor field. Tensor calculus In theoretical physics and other fields, differential equations posed in terms of tensor fields provide a very general way to express relationships that are both geometric in nature, guaranteed by the tensor nature, and conventionally linked to differential calculus. Even to formulate such equations requires a fresh notion, the covariant derivative. This handles the formulation of variation of a tensor field along a vector field. The original absolute differential calculus notion, which was later called tensor calculus, led to the isolation of the geometric concept of connection. Topic: <laughs> Twisting by a line bundle. An extension of the tensor field idea incorporates an extra line bundle L on M. If W is the tensor product bundle of V with L, then W is a bundle of vector spaces of just the same dimension as V. This allows one to define the concept of tensor density, a twisted type of tensor field. A tensor density is the special case where L is the bundle of densities on a manifold, namely the determinant bundle of the cotangent bundle. To be strictly accurate, one should also apply the absolute value to the transition functions. This makes little difference for an orientable manifold. For a more traditional explanation, see the tensor density article. One feature of the bundle of densities again assuming orientability L is that L's is well defined for real number values of S. This can be read from the transition functions, which take strictly positive real values. This means for example that we can take a half density, the case where S equals one half. In general we can take sections of W, the tensor product of V with L's, and consider tensor density fields with weight S. Half densities are applied in areas such as defining integral operators on manifolds, and geometric quantization. The flat case When M is a Euclidean space and all the fields are taken to be invariant by translations by the vectors of M, we get back to a situation where a tensor field is synonymous with a tensor sitting at the origin. This does no great harm, and is often used in applications. As applied to tensor densities, it does make a difference. 
the bundle of densities cannot seriously be defined at a point, and therefore a limitation of the contemporary mathematical treatment of tensors is that tensor densities are defined in a roundabout fashion. <laughs> Cocycles and chain rules As an advanced explanation of the tensor concept, one can interpret the chain rule in the multivariable case, as applied to coordinate changes, also as the requirement for self-consistent concepts of tensor giving rise to tensor fields. Abstractly, we can identify the chain rule as a one cocycle. It gives the consistency required to define the tangent bundle in an intrinsic way. The other vector bundles of tensors have comparable cocycles, which come from applying functorial properties of tensor constructions to the chain rule itself, this is why they also are intrinsic red, natural concepts. What is usually spoken of as the classical approach to tensors tries to read this backwards, and is therefore a heuristic, post hoc approach rather than truly a foundational one. Implicit in defining tensors by how they transform under a coordinate change is the kind of self consistency the cocycle expresses. The construction of tensor densities is a twisting at the cocycle level. Geometers have not been in any doubt about the geometric nature of tensor quantities, this kind of descent argument justifies abstractly the whole theory. <laughs> <laughs> Generalizations <laughs> Tensor densities The concept of a tensor field can be generalized by considering objects that transform differently. An object that transforms as an ordinary tensor field under coordinate transformations, except that it is also multiplied by the determinant of the Jacobian of the inverse coordinate transformation to the Wth power, is called a tensor density with weight W. Invariantly, in the language of multilinear algebra, one can think of tensor densities as multilinear maps taking their values in a density bundle such as the one-dimensional space of n forms where n is the dimension of the space, as opposed to taking their values in just r higher weights, then just correspond to taking additional tensor products with this space in the range. A special case are the scalar densities. Scalar 1 densities are especially important because it makes sense to define their integral over a manifold. They appear, for instance, in the Einstein–Hilbert action in general relativity. The most common example of a scalar 1 density is the volume element, which in the presence of a metric tensor G is the square root of its determinant in coordinates, denoted det G. The metric tensor is a covariant tensor of order 2, and so its determinant scales by the square of the coordinate transition. Det G equals Det X X 2 Det G Display style debt G equals left debt FRAC partial x partial x right carrot two debt G which is the transformation law for a scalar density of weight plus two. More generally, any tensor density is the product of an ordinary tensor with a scalar density of the appropriate weight. In the language of vector bundles, the determinant bundle of the tangent bundle is a line bundle that can be used to twist other bundles W times. 
while locally the more general transformation law can indeed be used to recognize these tensors, there is a global question that arises, reflecting that in the transformation law one may write either the Jacobian determinant, or its absolute value. Non-integral powers of the positive transition functions of the bundle of densities make sense, so that the weight of a density, in that sense, is not restricted to integer values. Restricting to changes of coordinates with positive Jacobian determinant is possible on orientable manifolds, because there is a consistent global way to eliminate the minus signs, but otherwise the line bundle of densities and the line bundle of n forms are distinct. For more on the intrinsic meaning, see density on a manifold. Topic. See also Jet bundle Ricci calculus Spinner field Notes